A Plea for Peace. Thich Nhat Hanh, the Vietnamese Zen teacher, made a statement that we should all regard ourselves as flowers and that we grow by being watered with love. This seemingly simple statement has a profound meaning and is typical of the totally practical advice that Thich Nhat Hanh gave out. Nothing technical to baffle the mind, just straight to the point. To my mind, the priority in this world is for us all to find ways to live together in peace and harmony. Otherwise, everything else counts for nothing. So in this manifested world, love is the most important thing that binds us together as brothers and sisters. It is lack of love that gives rise to violence and to anti-social behaviour. As a society, we are becoming less capable of loving each other and more alienated. Lack of love is what makes us fearful of our neighbours on all levels. And it is a lack of true love that brings weapons of destruction into being. It also hardens hearts and creates the might is right attitude. Is there any need to spend billions on ways to harm other human beings when charities that aim to help have to rely on public donations? Indeed, what kind of beings are we on this planet that we have to be so antagonistic all the time? And those who try to spread love and peace are regarded as crazy by the majority and often persecuted and killed. Why is it that innocent unarmed civilians are targeted and murdered in the name of so-called war? What is wrong with us that we answer violence with violence and so it is only escalating. In such cases, someone needs to break the circle to end the cycle. If I have to repeat it a hundred times, the reality is, as the Buddha said, hatred does not cease by hatred. Hatred only ceases by love. So violence will not cease by violence. Only love will end it. That makes sense, but is generally overlooked. Jesus told us to love our enemies, but his words are not good enough in so-called Christian countries. Every person has a unique story. They came into this world, passed through childhood, went to school, started work, fell in love, married, had children of their own, nurtured dreams, and aspirations. Then they became victims of a war in which they had no interest or involvement. Spiritually we grow through love. There is no other way and the fact that love is ignored, sentimentalized or sensualized takes us further away from understanding what it really is. At the heart of the universe is harmony. And this is manifested in nature. If you look at flocks of birds or shoals of fish, they all move in perfect harmony and never bump into each other, as we do as human beings. We crash into each other physically, mentally and emotionally. In some ways, self-consciousness is a blessing, but it can be a curse if not employed correctly. The lower aspects of our mind create separation and distort the harmony that is at the centre of our being. That is why we have to stabilise and purify our minds through our meditations and studies. Every human being has the same spirit animating them, but the clouds of our own making obscure its light from shining within us 
and radiating outwards into the world. Whether we call it Christ Consciousness, Buddha Nature, Krishna Consciousness, or by any other name, it is the same. And arguing over concepts and ideas is hindering our awakening to our true nature. Yet people are so wrapped up in delusional thought that they will fight and even kill because of misunderstandings of what the great world's teachers wanted to tell us. It is because these people could not live up to these ideals that they twisted them to fit in with their limited views and made them justify their bigotry and anger towards anyone who did not agree with their fractured vision of life. No one who truly follows the teachings of Jesus or the Buddha could ever entertain the use of violence. The fact is that most people have drifted away from any real belief in their religions and give just lip service to what is written in their scriptures. They become protective towards this counterfeit religion and oppose any other ways of thought, which leads to violence. So Christianity becomes a sort of anti-Christianity and the same can be applied to Islam. Buddhism in essence is the most peaceful of religions but still has its limitations in an exoteric sense. Of course there are practitioners of all these religions who have realised the more esoteric side to the teachings. So we have the Gnostics in Christianity, the esoteric Buddhists, the Sufis in Islam and the Vedantins in Hinduism. In many cases they are persecuted by the orthodox followers of the religion who live by the dead letter and are devoid of any spirituality whatsoever. Perhaps their conscience is pricked by the genuine devotees who are on the true path. The lack of understanding shows in their actions and their unwillingness to accept anything other than their distorted viewpoint. They express the lowest form of emotions and thoughts that society endorses such as anger, jealousy, bigotry and intolerance. History is full of atrocities carried out by those who fail to see that behind the masks we share one consciousness, one life force, one spirit. Even in the world at the moment, acts of cruelty and violence are being carried out and lives lost for what in the main are trivial reasons in the scale of things. So think of Thich Nhat Hanh's words if we imagine the world as a garden and everyone has flowers in that garden, then we know that to make them blossom and grow they need love, as plants need water. We understand how tenderly a gardener treats his flowers, how he nurtures them, protects them and takes pride in how beautiful they become because of that care. If we could only learn to see each other in that way, see in another human being the potential beauty that can be called forth if we can only help them see their true nature. If we see it in ourselves, we can then begin to look for it in others, too. As soon as one becomes aware that they are more than the world would have us believe that they are, then they are on the path and are beginning to blossom forth. The Zen saying is, no mud, no lotus. So we have to use life experiences, seemingly good or bad, to help us on our way. It's all a matter of having the right attitude to life and its ups and downs, and growing in the light of the spiritual sun that is shining in each one of us, behind our often misty minds. More misty than mystic, it would seem. How we love seeing flowers. We enjoy walking in gardens or visiting flower shields or having flowers around the house, as well as cultivating our own outside. Flowers have so much symbology attached to them 
and many have beautiful scents that we use in perfumes, air fresheners, etc. We use them and their scents to beautify the world. So let us in our own way beautify the world and make it a place of love and peace. Did not St. Francis say, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. So our Master can be said to be our Divine Nature, or our Higher Self, the Spirit within. The world has been expert in ignoring the words, words of all the great teachers throughout the ages. If they had listened, then there would have been less wars and conflicts. We would have practiced brotherhood and sisterhood and lived in harmony. The words of St. Francis can be used as a sort of mantra, as can many Buddhist te prayers and texts such as this. We are a link in Amida's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. We will keep our link bright and strong. We will be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than ourselves. We will think pure and beautiful thoughts, say be pure and beautiful words, and do pure and beautiful deeds. May every link in Amida's chain of love be bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Amida is the Buddha, or the Buddha of infinite light, symbolic of that divine light in each one of us. With so many wonderful words to inspire us, and give us guidelines how to live a peaceful and loving life. It is amazing how they have been rejected by the majority of society, particularly the followers of the world's religions, who should know better. Fortunately, there are those who are trying to live a spiritual life and keep the light shining in the midst of the darkness of the age. It is no small thing that these individuals and organisations are doing this, tending the sacred flame, until the day when the world at large realises the insanity of wars fought for trivialities, and that human life should be respected, and the only thing that we should be trying to cultivate is a universal brotherhood, regardless of race, creed, sex, caste or colour. Om Shanti, 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 peace, 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 peace on earth and goodwill to all beings.